Hi, I want to talk a little bit uh, about the rules and expectations in regards to master scheduling and organization in room 303. Uh, I think it's really important that early on you identify the importance of the master scheduling as we will refer to it in that term, uh, basically the use of a day planner. Now you have your student planner. It'll be real important that you put your name on it, that you bring it with you to class all, every day. We always reference this at the beginning of class. We always reference what it is that we have due in regards to student uh, master scheduling. I'm going to recommend that every evening that you're always before leaving the school building going to consult or reference your master schedule, your day planner, to see what you have to do, not only for this class, but for all the other classes that you have as well. The place actually, though, that I'm going to begin in regards to my comments on organization and the uh, master schedule is to go to your day one packet, and I'd like you to look, please, on page uh, six and seven of your day one packet. On page seven of your day one packet, I've already kind of mentioned this in another comment on the day one stuff, you want to take a look at the materials that you need to make sure that you always bring with you to class crucial, paramount of those materials will be your three-ring notebook with dividers. You will use that three-ring notebook as a means of organizing yourselves. Uh, Any time that I have something I'm going to hand out to you, I usually will three-hole punch it, and the reason is so that you can put it inside of your uh, notebook. So, for example, uh, the um, vocabulary packets that you'll have to study as you get ready for the examinations. I'm going to recommend that you put this inside of the vocab section of your three ring notebook. The uh, order of that uh, three ring notebook in terms of dividers is there listed for you on page seven. That's that contract page, that uh, rules and guidelines page. Uh, the first will be the master schedule followed by your, ch uh, your section for annotations followed by your section for vocabulary, I just referenced that, followed by your study of grammar work, and then finally any kind of writing assessment work. So you want to be sure that you get yourself a three-ring notebook, some dividers, as well as some loose-leaf paper. That is crucial along with the a few other things that I have listed there. No doubt you definitely need a couple of blue or black ink pens. You definitely want a couple of red ink pens. We do a lot of work with red ink in here. Um, I, I write in green. You will write in blue, black, and red ink. And so it's really important that you have always a backup in case for whatever reason your ink goes bad. So I recommend that you always have a second one. Keeping all of this in a backpack because of the nature of how we sit in our room at tables and we often will want to leave the room and maybe go elsewhere, I always ask that you bring all of your materials in a backpack as well. Now I want to reference uh, your day one packet page six and the organization and master schedule guidelines. Uh, as at, the, at the very beginning of the semester, we always ask that you do several things. We ask that you put together what we call your goals, that is to say your expectations for the class in the three areas of reading, writing, and organization. You'll kind of type those goals up for yourself. You'll hand them in as part of your master schedule deadline uh, that we'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, and uh, we'll look periodically at those guidelines as those goals and we'll ask, am I, am I accomplishing the, uh, the goals I set out for myself? Let's talk though about the master schedule deadline itself. If you look at your course outline, you will see that uh, we have a major deadline that comes due on August the 31st, if we're talking the fall of 2012. And uh, this uh, deadline um, will involve several key things, not, not least of which will be the master schedule deadline, part one and part two. If you look at page six of your day one packet, you will see that I've kind of outlined this for you. Part one of your master schedule is actually fairly simple. You're going to take all of the deadlines from your course outline, and you're going to write them into your day planner, your student planner, um, for each day. So for example, I'm looking at um, a, a random course outline here and it says that on uh, September the 24th there is a discussion of Plato's Republic Book 1. Then um, for September the 25th in your student planner you would want to write that information down. This will be a, a simple way 
for you to be able to always know what's coming. Now in our class together, typically every Wednesday, we begin class by doing what we call Master Schedule Review. By that we mean that we will always talk through the detailed expectations for your Master Schedule Student Planner for the next week and a half. And we always do this on Wednesdays. If you're absent on Wednesdays, it's crucial that you get with your study buddy and you kind of go through this information with he or she so that you know what to, how to update your, uh, your day plan or your master schedule. So part one of the master schedule simply is to put all of the information off of the course outline inside of the day planner. You simply write it in there in the day planner. Part two is a little more labor intensive. You're going to actually study closely the course outline. And you're going to divide up the work of the course outline into the major categories that we have for work in our class. They're listed for you right there on page 6, A through F. And what you will do is simply type the heading of grammar and vocabulary study. We do two things when we create a master schedule part two. We are very interested in answering the question, what's due? But we're also very interested in answering the question, when is it due? It's not enough, for example, to know that you have an exam over the first unit coming in, uh, in, in, uh, you know, in the future. You need to know specifically what day it's coming so that you can plan accordingly. So there's two things for Master Schedule Part 2 that are of significance. The first is you're going to list under headings the work that's due, heading A, grammar vocab, heading B, reading, annotation work. You'll see that this will be the largest listing of work for us, um, and so on and so forth. You'll list two pieces of information, what exactly is assigned and when is it assigned. So for example, notice F is the unit or part exams. How many exams do we have? You'll list those by date. So that will allow you to kind of know really quickly what specifically the work is that's involved in the class. You'll type this up. You'll bring it with you on the day of the um, master schedule uh, exam deadline date. We'll keep this in the first section of our notebook and we'll consult it periodically. It will allow us to kind of always be looking ahead. One of the things we like to do in master scheduling is to look ahead two or three weeks. So, for example, if you're a ball player of some kind, or you're involved in activities, extracurricular activities, you always want to make sure that you have all of that information written in your day planner. But you want to make sure that if you're going to be absent on a day, for example, a Friday, then you want to be telling your instructors, not just me, but all of your other instructors, about this absence several days in advance. That way, if you have instructors that say, I want the information that you'll be missing due before you leave, you can get that done. Of course, if you're allowed to make it up upon return, obviously you want to accommodate and make plans for that as well. So this Master Schedule Part 1 and Part 2 is a way for you to have a sense of the overall terrain or territory of the class and the work that's involved. Obviously, I would recommend that your other classes, especially core classes that you're studying, you would try to do something very similar, where maybe you go to your math instructor and ask, is there any way I can know the workload that for me is due, my homework assignments, my exams that are coming for the next couple of weeks at least, so that I can put that in my student planner so that I can begin to kind of plan. You will notice that often at Whirlin High, we seem to kind of work through a period of several weeks and then several classes at the same time, within the same period of days even, will give a major examination. This happens all the time. It makes sense then that you would want to kind of know that in advance. That way you're not up late the night before the exam when the next day you have an exam in English and in math and in history. You probably will not be preparing as well as you could if you had taken several days in advance. The master scheduling will help you to be able to plan appropriately. So uh, there's the introductory materials. Obviously, page six, I want you to read closely in the uh, numbers of one through eight. I have some study homework suggestions for you there as well. It's going to be really crucial that you decide what your study rhythms are, when you're doing your homework, where you're doing your homework, a well-lighted place, uh, usually sitting at a table and not doing your homework lying on a bed or on the floor, asking for silence. 
The importance of studying in bursts is very uh, often suggested here in 303. That is to say, you turn your phone off, you sit for uh, 10 minutes, no more than 15, you study, uh, then you get up, you walk around, you take two or three minute break, and then you come back again to do that work. The suggestion will be that you always make a to-do list of homework for that evening, and then mark off either out of your day plan or off the actual list that you create that homework so that you all always are uh, aware of the work that's coming and how you're getting that work done. I wish you luck in your organization. There is no doubt about it. You must be organized if you are going to meet what we call multiple deadlines. I have students who can accomplish a single deadline, get X done by, uh, by next Wednesday. They can do that. But when I say to them, you have four assignments that are due in the next three weeks, uh, they often will miss some of the information that they needed and their planning uh, is a problem. Of course, procrastination is always an issue for high school students as it is for all human beings and the challenge is to get a plan and then really be motivated to try to follow through with the plan and that may be for some of you some of your goals in regards to the organization is to try to overcome procrastination. If you have any questions at all about master scheduling, you can always email me at the address there at learnstrong.net or you can always call me as well. I'm always happy to sit down with students and to talk about master scheduling and how we can improve and balance all of the different activities of our life. Thank you very much.